Okay. Right. So we're going to start laying down, and I should have said, if you have got a slightly heavy blanket or a slightly heavy, heavy jumper or a slightly heavy towel that's to hand, or maybe even a pillow might work, we've got that little movement that we're going to start just in the big toe. And sometimes if you've been struggling with finding that movement, it helps if you put something on top of the big toe. Um, so, <laughs> Merlin's blanket. So essentially just find a position that feels comfortable, probably laying down. And then you've got something, it works in bed really well actually. So if you do remember tonight, if you can feel your toes, underneath the blanket. I hate, I don't, I don't want to say quilts because I feel like that's too much, but yeah. So essentially you've got another point of contact. And then with or without the blanket, just see if you can circle just the big toe. Yeah, and it might be that those of you that have got a blanket, it just becomes easier to find where the big toe is because you've got a little bit of feedback. And then once you feel that you are connected to that big toe, then you can just stay there. You don't have to do left and right. You might want to do one at a time. But then just allow the breath to be a little bit more aware. Allow the breath to be fuller and freer and deeper. And whenever you're ready, you can stay with this a bit longer. This feels, to me, it feels really, really lovely, especially if you've got that blanket over the top. But if you're ready, you very gently just bend the knees and just take away any sheets or tails or blankets you've got. Yep, maybe you come back to them at a later point. And then soles of the feet find a... And if this is the first time that the feet have been naked, have been bare on the floor, then just allow them to spread, allow all of the sensations, all of that feedback, all of that information to travel up through the soles of your feet. And then just for a second, just lift and lower the hips and then we'll add a little bit of toe action. But when you're ready, just lift and lower the hips, yeah. And then maybe as we start nice and easy, maybe we just push in through the big toe as we lift up. Maybe we just stay a little bit more connected to big toe. And as always, if you want a little bit of a wriggle or a movement on the top that's not quite so formulaic, then feel free. You might explore other planes. And then in a minute, if you haven't already, we're going to include the arms and we're going to include a big toe lift. So our exhale sees our arms down by our side and our big toe down and our hips down. And on the inhale, we lift the arms up and over, we lift the hips. We push down through the four toes and lift the big toe. And then exhale. 
Drop the arms, drop the hips, big toe, find the earth. And then keep going with this. Really good. And I'm hoping that big toe action isn't annoying you. But if you can, can you really, really stay focused with those three movements, movements of the arms, movements of the hips and the movements of the big toe? And can you time them so that you fall back to the ground at the same time? So that the toe is halfway lifted when the arms are halfway lifted, when the hips are halfway lifted. And I know that's really hard because the big toe has only got <laughs> such a small way to travel compared to the arm. So just do three more in your own speed. And whenever it is that we finish that third one, hopefully brain feels a little bit more spacious now. Good morning, Sarah. You always try and creep in. Like, <laughs> I recognize those legs anywhere. And then very, very gently, just <laughs> whatever you need just to recover from that. And then before we come into cat, I just realized I've sucked in my t-shirt. Before we come into cat cow, just come to a sit and we'll do that little that that little big toe awareness. Keep losing my music, it's really annoying. Okay. So just as I've said it before, your foot can be up, your foot can be down. Down is a little bit easier to gauge the movement, I find. Um, so but it's up to you. And then I'm going to do moving my toe to the left and then move my toe to right with resistance. So first of all, just using your fingers, just push the big toe so it's closer to the second toe. And then keep a tiny bit of resistance as you take that big toe out to the side and it will be a really small movement. And then once again, push the big toe into the second toe. And then widen out. So it's almost as if you're spreading out your fingers, that kind of feeling of giving some space between the webbing, but you're using your toes. And when you feel like you've got the rhythm or you've got those muscles are working, then you can start to add a little bit more resistance, but not, not enough so the toe can't move. So I'm feeling this in the arch of my foot, in the medial arch of my foot. So that's the side that is in the inside. And you can stop there. You can go ahead and do the other side, the same movement, or you can stick with that same toe. And you can either train the other side of the muscles. So you take your hands in between the first uh, toe and the big toe, and then just take the muscle, take the toe out to the side, and then try and get the toe to come back into center. Or you probably don't want to work those muscles if you've already got a little bit of joint action going on. So you might want to work the muscles that flex the toe or the muscles that extend the toe. And if you're working the muscles that are flexing the toe, you're going to take your fingers behind the big toe and then take your fingers so that the big toe, the big toe nail is coming closer to the shin and then trying to resist that by curling the toe.
And then once you've done two different actions on one foot, you can move on to the rest. And you might not need the exact same actions on both sides. So I'm going to go and move over to my other side. I'm going to push my big toe closer to my second toe. And then create a little bit of resistance and then try and spread my big toe out to the side. And you might find like me that you've got one really responsive foot that really kind of works well. And you've got kind of a big, exciting range of movement and you can really feel lots of activation. And you might find one that's really quite quiet and you're having to work really hard to stay focused because it's annoying. And then just choose one final movement, probably on that same toe. Do you want to flex or extend? Flexing is essentially where we come and curl our foot underneath and extending is where we take the toenail closer to the shin. You just recreate resistance in the opposite way. Woo! Then to right. And again, you might find some really quite Quite dramatic discrepancies in strength. Yeah. Then once you've done that, have a little foot wiggle just to set in that pattern. And for me, I feel I'm so aware of where my big toe is. And then cat cow with that new sensation. So tuck the toes underneath, give them a little bit of a wriggle. You might need to spend a little bit more time on the other eight toes that we haven't really paid much attention to. And then just cat cow while I try and use it. If you want to stay with cat cow for another minute and you just want to skip the next thing you are more than welcome it feels nice just to be in something really comforting and comfortable then go ahead but otherwise find a little bit more neutrality through the spine a little bit more center stabilization and then just right foot right leg extends behind you keep the toes tucked up on the ground for a second and then lean a tiny little bit forward so that leg becomes really light and then just really, really slowly feel that leg off the ground. Really slowly, nice. Good. And then Jen, maybe you can turn your hips a little bit down. So the float, I don't think, I think it might be my camera. Oh no, it wants to be good. Hello. And then exhale super, super slowly again. Bend that knee in, round through the spine, drop the head. Oh, oh, great. And then inhale, take that floaty leg straight out. And take it straight up. You can look up as well. And then give a little bit of a toe wiggle. The rest of the toes, the ankles might want to join in. And then drop the knee. Oh. You want to take the weight off your hands like me for a second because that was quite a lot doing it in slow mo. If you can, and then when you're ready, same thing other side. So hands come down, stabilize, find the center of your body, just see if you can find it. And then super duper slow, tuck the toes and just extend the leg behind you, see what goes well. And then lean a little bit. So that leg is really light, so that very, very gently, just let it fly off. I've just noticed that I do this. Yeah. <laughs> and then gently as you exhale, that knee comes underneath and you round and dive the head in. And then inhale, see if you can keep the lean forward as you take the leg 
wave around you and then lift it skyward. And you can probably lift the head as well. Yeah. Good. And then give that a little bit of a toe wiggle. Big toe in particular, specifically. Oh. And then just drop the knees down and then just have a little side walk. Is it just me or was that really hard on the bum? Just me? Sammy's like, I was fine. <laughs> and then very, very gently. <laughs> Bend the knees. <clears throat> Lift up, down the face and ball. Oh no, you know what this means in bed like that. I'm in trouble. From downward facing dog. Just have a little push into the big toe again. So squeeze the big toe down. Just feel that that's going to stretch a little bit more through the back of the legs. Going to get a little bit more connected. And then inhale as you look forward. And then step forward with the awareness running through the big toe, nice and slow. Forward fold. We're just going to do two here because I spent a long time warming us up. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, bend the knees, sit the hips way low into our chair with the big toes spreading it. Inhale, push down through the big toe, lift all the way up, so I it. Exhale as the hands find their way into the heart center. Oh. Inhale, take the feet wide and the arms up. And then exhale, Malasana. Yay. At the bottom, once again, spread the weight. As we exhale, lift up. Inhale as the arms drift. And exhale, Malasana. Inhale, spread the way. <laughs> that was a jump, Melissa, Melody. I loved it. Very cool. And then exhale, lift. <laughs> Last one. Inhale as the arms do something different. Maybe you have a little stretch. And then exhale. Hips go all the way back into the hamstring, saying no. Knees bend. There's that lovely control. Inhale as you pause. And then just exhale, dive through that little cave we've created. Adjust the feet forward fold. Just drop the head for a second. Oh, and then inhale, flat back. Exhale, Bukhutasana, chair press. <laughs> inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands come into the heart. Inhale, we take the arms up, the feet wide. I should just say as well, feel free if you have that kettlebell weight or a weight to use in your medicine if you want to use them, feel free. As long as it's not anything heavier than kind of nine kilo. And then exhale, back up. And it might be that you want to use the weight, but maybe, next exhale, come back down. Maybe you just use the weight if we're not used to it on the descent on that controlled descent. Inhale as you pause, and then you pop the weight down for the ascent. Up to you. Last one, exhale. I love how no one went to grab their head for a little like, no, no. <laughs> Sometimes I forget to remind you on the Sunday. Inhale, take your arms through. Oh, that was so nice. Exhale, forward foot. Inhale as you pause. Exhale, right leg comes back, well there's lunch. On the inhale, stabilize that back foot and just feel into the back boot time. As you exhale, push in through both feet so you can lift up, when it's quite a lot, into a high lunge. As we inhale, drop the back knee, as we exhale, head off to the diagonal so you can lift up to lizard. 
to come towards the uh, other yeah, that's right nice is that nice okay Hmm. Pull the arms back and then exhale, laying down with this. Inhale as the right leg lifts skyward. Exhale, we've got that transition into gate. So that right knee comes inside. We land it. We take the foot off our mat, turn to open, and we lift that top arm. Oh my God, I can see a massive big. And it wants to come to do some big picking. Just notice. Lift that straight leg straight up to the sky. Look to the front of your mat. Runners lunge. You just have one hand down. Nice. That's a nice transition. Lovely. Good luck with. Well done as well because you've got Bernard there. Inhale as you look forward. And exhale. Should be feeling really quite stable now to come into our forward fold. Yeah. Inhale as we pause. Exhale. Left leg back. Runners lunge. Inhale as we settle in with that back big toe. And maybe give it a little bit of a wiggle. Yeah. Push down with the front foot. Push down with the back foot so you can come up on an exhale into a high lunge. Inhale as you drop the back knee. And then our exhale, see the dive forward towards that left hand corner, lifting that back heel and maybe taking the foot over to the right, up to you. Waiting here for our inhale. And an exhale, moving our hands so they make sense for a downward facing dog. Dropping the foot. Inhale, left leg lifts all the way up to the sky. Exhale, left knee comes in. Turn the foot out. Yeah. Good if you haven't already lifted that leg. Up to the sky, yes, so just give it a little bit more lift. And then look forward, swing forward, runner's lunge, with one hand down, the other hand, free the ceiling. Good. Inhale as you look forward, exhale forward fold. That's already quite a complicated slow to start off with. Inhale, ah, oh, take a pause. This is a weird one to go back into. Exhale, step the right leg back into triangle. Oh, it's not the smoothest of All right. From here, as we inhale, bend the front knee, reverse. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Exhale, good. Half moon. Take your time. You might have made the first one or the second. Inhale as you pause. And then exhale, land, reverse walker. Really good. We're now going to move between each postures in your own in your own speed. Exhale as we come up. <laughs> Don't look at my screen. <laughs> and then pause. And then gently come back, reverse warrior. You might want to use your inhales as a little pause and your exhales to move. You don't have to. But we've got a sense of balance if you're not me. Good. Nice squeeze, really lovely. Do a few more and try and slow it right down. Yep. Good job. It's such a lovely rehearsal. Take your time. Good. Yes, good control. Get the leg a little bit higher, Sammy. Tiny bit higher, sorry. Last one. And then wherever you end up, you can do it from a half moon or from a reverse one where you're just taking in here. And then exhale, drop the hands, adjust the feet so you're in down dog, however you want to get there, wherever it is. Inhale, we'll just slide through to our plank. On an exhale, push through your right hand side or right hand foot. Side plank if it feels okay. Can you give your big toes on both, both feet a little bit of a wriggle? And just gently transition back into a plank. Oh, drop the knees, chatter under down. Yep. Yeah, I definitely avoid chatting up. Inhale, come up, locust. 
Yes. Nice. You've got a tiny bit more height there in your legs. It's going to be a tiny bit. More. And then exhale all the way down. In there's the hands, adjust underneath. And exhale, let's start. Push back through plank into down dog. So we've got from our dog, we look forward. And as we exhale, maybe there's a little jump. Celebrate really being in all this. Ah. Inhale, let's pause. Exhale, left leg back. Try and trick on us. Inhale to bend the front knee. Slide that top thumb up and over on the first wheel. And then exhale. Nice and slow and steady. Oh, mm. Plenty of time to get us there. You might want to wait and use the inhale for a pause. And exhale into the verse, or you might not. Yeah. So whatever works best. Really good. Good. Just watch that front knee and this tiny bit. Yeah, just make sure it's facing in line. Good. Great balance, Gemma. Really great. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Keep going from one to the other. Really choice of breath. Mm -hmm. Just keep your head still and your eyes still, Sammy. It's nice and gentle. And then just find landing. Head still, eyes still. Yeah, nice. And just two more wherever you are. Good, it's a lovely soft landing to be in, really nice. And this next one, can you go a little bit uh, longer with the legs? So you challenge your sense of balance because you're landing so controlled. It'd be nice just to, yeah, good. Super soft moon. And that back leg seats a little bit more towards the back. Oh, great. And wherever you are, half moon or reverse, come into a downward facing leg. Down the dog, you can then have a slide into a plank. Or if you're not feeling like a plank today, it can be a tabletop. And exhale, some sort of sidey planky thing. You can be chattering already. <laughs> Maybe give them the big toes a little bit of a wiggle here. And then come all the way back in plank. Dropping the knees, bending the elbows. Inhale as we lift up, locust. Taking the arms and squeezing them closer together so we lift up, open through the chest. And then exhale, drop down. Inhale the arms to our knee. Exhale, there's that lovely push and press back, Ardha Mukha, downward facing. Once we're there, if we inhale, we look forward and we find some strength through our hands and our shoulders. We've got springy knees. Now uh, exhale. Jump through. Too close down. Let's just have a little comforting half salute. Inhale, flat back. Get some length through the sides of the neck as well. Exhale, bend the knees. Katasana. Inhale as we push down, lift all the way up. And exhale, hands into that. Just one malasana. Inhale, spread the feet, lift the arms. And exhale. Oh, that was a quick descent down. Okay. Inhale as you take the arms through. And exhale, forward fold. All right. From here, we're going to come up to a standing position. So push down through the soles of the foot. So you can lift all the way up. Have a little wriggle. And then as you exhale, drop down chair. If your toes are still feeling right, back is feeling all right, knees are feeling all right, as we come up, lift all 
onto the toes. All right. And then exhale, drop back down, chair, heels drop. Inhale, lift up, maybe tiptoes. Good. Can you keep the weight spreading? Can you go somewhere that you don't normally go in the tiptoes? Can you keep the toes connected? Yeah, really good. When we come to do this on the other side, I'll give you a little bit of a different option. You don't have to do it. Last few, maybe you start to speed it up or maybe it feels nice staying slow and controlled. So I leave it up to you. Don't hit the ceiling like I just did in my exuberance. <laughs> and then stay in your chair. Good. In your chair, get a little bit lower now. Heels on the ground, three hands. And then just soften through the stomach and the shoulders. Nice and up. Ah. Inhale as we pause. Exhaling. Right leg comes back. Warrior two. Open up, warrior two. Oh, release. On the inhale, we travel forward with the hips, forward with the head, forward with the arms, warrior one. Don't straighten your leg like I've just done. Front knee stay bended in me. Yours. And then exhale, lift the back heel, turn the back toe so that everything's facing the front. Inhale, reassert where the arms are. So give them a little bit of stretch and keep them there. Keep them in that same relationship to your head as you tilt forward. And warrior three. All right. Stay here, move the arms so you feel you can stabilize. Start to have a little push and pull through the big toe so you know where it is. And then when you feel ready, you're going to bend into that front knee. Toenails, that didn't work for me. Toenails are going to be the first thing to hit the ground gently. So you gently, gently let them come and then slide down. Good. If you want to try that again, try it again. So if it didn't quite work, feel free to try it again. Give up. No, thank you. I don't ever want to do that again. Good. <laughs> I love that space to be in so much. Good. It, so essentially, you have to kind of keep the muscles active. So even though it's tempting, as soon as you land the foot to put weight through, that just means if you do it too much, you're going to kind of collapse down. So think of it as you're still in uh, a warrior three. You've just got a tiny bit more of touch going through that back leg. Either way, oh. come into your low lunge if you're not already. And then just a downward facing dog. I'm going to tabletop because that I don't feel like here. And if you've got a little being with you, you might just give them a little head nudge or a little kiss in front of them. Why not? Why not? So don't get too excited. And then inhale through to a plank. Maybe in your plank, you might lift up the right leg and have a little right big toe action. Maybe if you're feeling all right, good. And then drop the foot back down. Drop the knees if it feels better and then come onto your belly if you check for anything. Inhale as you lift up locust. Pulling the shoulder blades down and squeezing them together. I know I'm in good grip. And exhale, all the way back down. Tucking the toes and adjusting the arms. And then push up, press back down. All right, if you want. First and last chance on this side. Three hops with your right leg up if you fancy it. You don't have to. You might, yeah, that looks good. Go for it. Energetic. Good. And then when you're happy, forward fold. But that's a very open ended statement. When you're happy. All right. Inhale as you pause. Pushing down through the feet. As we exhale, come all the way up to stand. So totally optional. If you want, rather than doing two uh, feet tiptoeing, two feet come down, 
it might be that you take one foot off the floor and you can alternate whenever you want. And then just work on getting the heel lifted and then lowering. If that goes to okay, then as you lift, it might be that you lift, you have a little bend of the knee, and then you straighten up and you lower. Otherwise, stay with that. If that's if you haven't done any tiptoeing stuff for a whole week, stay with that. But otherwise, you might explore what's my unilateral foot like? What's it like to tiptoe on just one? And maybe we don't even bother with bending the knee, maybe we just focus on lifting and lowering. So we lean a little bit forward, we spread out the weight through the whole width of our toe, and then we lift. Good. If we've just been doing on one side, it might be a good time to come and place the other. Mm -hmm. Good. And again, with these, you might be really surprised at the difference between left and right. So lean a little bit forward, that's really going to help the lift. And then push through the toes, spread the weight up. Good. Get a little bit lower in your chair, Jennifer. And then whatever you're doing. Good, nice time. You drop the heels. Allow the torso to unwind over the legs. Maybe even drop the shoulders. Then protract the shoulders. Let them just come over to the left and the right side. So the arms come. Nice big inhale. And then exhale. Open it up. Warrior two. Oh, your feet feel so nice. Inhale as we turn to face the front. Keep the front knee bent. Such a tricky thing. And then exhale, lift the back heel so we can turn the back toes, the back legs. Everything's facing. Yeah, oh, I forgot. Inhale, slide to gallop on horse. I forgot. Good. And then keep the arms by the ears. And then very, very gently. Oh. Warrior three. Really good. Arms staying by the ears. So super, super tough. Good. Last breath with the arms by the ears. And then just drop the arms. Have them so that you can feel that you can balance. Back big toe is going to seek out the back of the mat. Big toe finds the mat. And then you just keep on extending that toe back. Yeah. And again, if you want to try a second time on that same side, go for it. So you bend into the front leg, you allow the foot just gently to come down, so there's hardly any weight. And so I still got all my weight through my front. I know that's tough. Nice. Good. Yes. That looks really good, except that you, you um, tuck the toes, Gem, rather than let it, yeah. But the weight was perfect. And then downward facing dog, your weight control was perfect. From downward facing dog, come into a plank. You can lift that left leg if you want to. If it's lifted, give it a lower. And then onto your bellies, however you want. Chaturangas. Oh, such a nice chaturanga sound. Yeah. Good. And then a back bend of your choice. Yes, nice one. Oh, what a surprise. No one's in Locust. So surprised. <laughs> I feel like I've made that joke so many times, but I still find it so amusing. That's going to be on my, on my headstone, isn't it? Don't bury me in Locust. <laughs> and then come all the way down. <laughs> Take the hands underneath. And then almost the last thing down the face of it. In your dog, if that left leg wants to go and explore the air around the lower head, if you feel happy to begin your rescue plan. Yes, that is a lovely drop of energy. And then you can have little hops. So maybe three or four hops to the left leg up. Your choice though, the last thing we're doing. Not ever. Good to be in a little food. Yeah, really great. And then gently just come rest. You've been to full range this morning, Sammy. 
Can you go to the full range this morning? If you're on mute, don't forget you'll be on the video. So just, <laughs> yeah, okay. You, you just seemed a little bit, a little bit tired. I thought maybe you'd already knocked yourself out. Um, if you want to be in pigeon, be in pigeon. If you want to be in a little bit more of a restful position, you can. So sometimes pigeon is really nice if you just stay at level five out of 10 for the stretch and then drop down, maybe using a block. So up to you. But either way, we've just got three minutes. So as usual, I'm going to put myself on silent. Otherwise, I will continue. You can talk. felt that those last three minutes were the quickest three minutes in the bath. And if you want to spend just another two minutes just really restoring and just really finding positions that allow the muscles just to unwind and come back home after traveling in the yoga land. And please do, you don't need to seal your practice. Otherwise, maybe there's some point today that's just a little bit of time where you just think, oh, I can just take an extra breath here or just take an extra push down of the foot or get barefoot or anything. Just come to really a little bit more of a rest, a little bit more of a Sunday ease. If you feel ready, you can just start to maneuver yourself onto your side and from your side onto into a seated position. If you're already up, you might have a little head roll or an eye open. And then take the arms straight up to the sun. 
and then just allow them to be taken all the way back down. In those who resist and travel to the sun. Exhale that peaceful, tough acceptance. And back to the heart. And now take the arms up, arms together. Exhale into the heart center. Right. Stop the recording. Okay.